Chapter 15 Woven Then Spun Come in, Irene, said the silvery voice of her grandmother. The princess opened the door and peeped in, but the room was quite dark and there was no sound of the spinning wheel. She grew frightened once more, thinking that, although the room was there, the old lady might be a dream after all. Every little girl knows how dreadful it is to find a room empty where she thought somebody was. But Irene had a fancy too that the person, person she came to find was nowhere at all. She remembered, however, that at night she only spun by moonlight and concluded that that what was why there was no sweet bee-like humming. The old lady must be somewhere in the dark. But before she had time to think another thought, she heard the voice again saying, Come in, Irene. From the sound, she understood at once she was not in the room beside her. Perhaps she was in her bedroom. She turned across the passage, feeling her way to the other door. When her hand fell on the lock, the old lady spoke. Shut the door behind you, Irene. I always close the door to my workroom when I go to my chamber. Irene wondered to hear the voice so plainly through the door. A look through the door. Having shut the other door, she opened it and went in. Oh, what a lovely haven to reach from the darkness and the fear th from which she had come. The soft light made her feel as if she was going to the heart of the milkiest pearl, while the blue walls and their silver stars for a moment perplexed her with the fancy that they ought in reality to have been covered in clouds just as the sky was in the rain clouds outside. I have lighted the fire for you, Irene. You're cold and wet, said her grandmother. Then Irene looked again and saw what she had taken for a huge bouquet of red roses on a low stand against the wall was in fact a fire burning in the shape of the loveliest, reddest roses, glowing gloriously between the hands and heads, hand, heads and wings of two 